I did it. I tapped into my gas tank. It works. Let me show you how I did it. But first, I gotta run to Walmart. I gotta get some melatonin. I don't need a cart. I'm coming here just for one thing. Although every time I come here and I don't get a cart, I end up getting other things and wish, wish I got a cart. Every time I come here, I just go, wow. This used to be full of all sorts of ammo you could buy. Now you can only buy shotgun ammo. We're definitely living in a different world. Eh. Hey, how, how cool would this be? Uh, just get a BB gun or, you know, and just mount it on the van inside. That'd be kind of cool, just for looks. Let's see. I always like to go down this aisle because this is a lot of good stuff for van life. I actually have one of those. Um, it's always good to have a empty backpack in the van, just for whatever. It's like a courtesy backpack. Just stuff it somewhere, that way you can load it up with some clothes or whatever you need to do. Last year when I was up in the UP, we... Uh, I ended up taking that backpack, putting some water and some food and some rope and carabiners and stuff, and we went boating. And it's just nice to have an extra backpack for whatever. That's what I actually came here for. Just that one thing. Ah, okay. Got everything put away. Every time I go to Walmart, it's like a weird little routine. I do like a circle. I go through the food, and then I go over by uh, like medicines and stuff, and then I go by sporting's good. I do the same route every time. I look at the same stuff. Sometimes I get stuff, sometimes I don't. Anyways, so I tapped into my gas tank, and it all works. Let me go back to the shop, and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so I did it. It's all official. Here's what I did. That last video you guys saw with the little fuel pump going into the gas tank and the return and the fuel pressure release thing, gone. That was more of an experiment. It worked. Uh, I'm not doing that anymore. So what I figured, and I was right, turns out these 2000 watt generators do in fact have small fuel pumps. So the reason they have fuel pumps is because the carburetor is uh, sits more like in the center is with the um, fuel tank. So the fuel goes down and the fuel pump shoots it up into the carburetor. I thought these things were gravity fed for sure, but nope. Turns out they have fuel pumps, which means when you have this, here, let me when you have this, it does, when there's a sealed system, it does in fact pull fuel into it very slowly. So what I did is I tapped into the gas tank and I put a prime bulb. Say the fuel's right there. That's primed. And just hit that a couple times. See a little air going in there. Start the generator and it will, the fuel's already here. It, that fuel pump is strong enough to just keep it going. 
So on the Ford Transits, in the fuel pump assembly, which is in the gas tank, there is a auxiliary fuel line. And I, I learned this not too long ago. So, and I came this close to just tapping into that. Why wouldn't you? But the reason I didn't is I wanted, I wanted to tap in uh, about two inches above the floor of the gas tank on the side. So that way, the gravity, the fuel will push it through the line to here. Now, granted, this uh, fuel, the prime ball probably would have done it, but I don't know. I liked it this way. And I did that to, uh, I, did, I went two inches above the floor. That way I can never run, the generator will never run me fully out of gas. I have like, a, so around a quarter tank on, in the van is when it stops taking fuel. So I just call it, hey, fill up at a quarter. And, you're never, and you'll always be good. And it works. It works well. I've ran this thing overnight several times just to test it. I never, I didn't need to run a load on it. Now, with a load, it might be a little different. It's going to run faster. That piston's going to go much faster, which is that pump will be working faster. So we should try it overnight with a load. In theory, it should all work and be fine. But uh, yeah, this thing works great. Let me show you where I tapped in. And this is a little weird. Okay. It looks messy, but believe me, it's not, uh, it's solid. So there's the floor. There's where I tapped in. So all I did was drill a hole, the right size, just slightly smaller than, on the other side of this thing is, it's threaded. And I threaded that thing in. And then what I did is uh, I, I took this fuel-resistant uh, sealant and I put it all on the threads like, like you would with um, thread lock. And I just tightly threaded it in and the wall of this is like maybe an eighth of an inch, if that. So it's not much, but this thing is solid. Looks weird, but it's not going anywhere. Nothing's leaking. And then I took a little bit of uh, that plastic bonder, and on the top side over there, I put a little dab of plastic bonder to glue, to glue it to the tank. It's a plastic tank. Now, my original idea was to use this line, cut, cut, and put in a pipe and tap into that somehow, but turns out this is there's no fuel in this. This is a filler. You know, this thing could be completely full, and I pull this off, and nothing's coming out. It's a weird contraption, so that didn't work. I ended up just doing this. And what I like about this little thing is it's got a kill switch. So right now I could turn it off. So if I ever have any problems, I could literally just crawl under here and, and turn it off. And that kills the fuel line. Um, yet to have any leaks. It's been so far very good. I could run this thing. I could run that generator with the AC for maybe 150 hours straight if I wanted to. So the whole point of all this is so I could run the generator, run that AC, and overnight, and not have to refill it. Last year I didn't have to refill it because I had that other crazy contraption, and I would just take my gas. You know what I did is in the summer I I took the propane tank out of there because I wasn't using the buddy heater, and I would put a gas tank in there, and then at night I would just set it right next to the box, and then put the hook up the tube, start it, and the process would work. This is way simpler less things to worry about and it runs off the tank now so I never had to refill that tank or the red one I was talking about um, I just keep the gas mainly full and when it gets to about a quarter tank that's when it stops taking fuel from the uh, from the van so that's my setup I'm very happy with it I actually have some quick connects coming uh, those same connections for the outboard motors so that way you know, and I'm going to replace this. I, I have this clear tube just so I could see it, but I'm going to replace it with this black tube, much better. Uh, and I'm going to have a quick connect so that way I could disconnect it if I need to and pull the generator out and go use it elsewhere if I need to. But uh, yeah, that all worked out great. I'm very happy with it. And uh, it runs the AC. I just come out here, start her up, 
and it's not that loud man you know this box is great you know I, I made I cut a hole and put this vent here I got a vent there there and there now in the summer when it's really hot overnight I still take this pipe and I still kind of keep it open a little bit and the reason for that is because it does get warm in there and I've had the generator cut out on me and I think it just kind of overheated but ever since I started putting the pipe there it it's it has yet to cut out on me now when you're running these generators um, when you're running these generators overnight you're using it six seven eight hours a day so to speak now if you're using it during the day it's even more so I would always recommend if you have a generator in your van keep oil with you and the reason for that is because it burns oil and you want to change the oil quite often I do stuff like that on these little motors all the time I think I did it maybe twice maybe three times last summer I would change it just change the oil and they're super easy to do now on the other van I had it strapped on the front looked stupid looked crazy looked like a hobo in a van but uh this van I built it out nice you wouldn't even know there's a generator in there it looks like a utility van but um yeah so that's that's what I did so I could pull that I could pull that generator out very easily do a little oil change put it back in and as long as you keep up with the maintenance on those little Hondas they last forever they're great and I'm not putting down the Predator generators the only reason I ended up with a Honda is because it is physically smaller where the Predator it doesn't fit in there it's just an inch too tall otherwise I would have stuck with the Predator Predator generator from Harbor Freight those are fine those are awesome generators I still have one I just ended up getting this one and I have another one in the shop you know just for whatever so yeah that's the only that's the only reason I got the Honda otherwise I would have had a Predator in there so anyways that's it it's that simple now if you're if you're not mechanical this seems like crazy when I was drilling into that gas tank I felt the same way when I was cutting the hole for the max fan kind of nervous well one thing I did is I ran this thing out of gas I, I was like right on E and then what I did is I I got a jack and I tilted the van so that way any fuel would be on that side of the gas tank and when I drilled into nothing leaked out it was it, it if you're a mechanical type of person you'll, you'll see this and be like oh yeah that's not that hard it's just a little nerve-wracking because you're putting a hole in your gas tank that scares me so if something does go wrong like it starts to leak or I don't know if something does go wrong I do have a uh, plastic JB weld and it's fuel resistant so worst case scenario I could like let's just say that thing starts leaking like crazy and if even if I turn it off it does it just keeps leaking I could pull it out it would be kind of hard but I could I could pull it out and I could patch that hole with this JB weld stuff it's fuel resistant uh, I actually did that on a generator one time there was a hole in in the gas tank for whatever reason I think somebody tapped into it I don't know or tried to do something and uh, turns out that's why it was running out of gas fast and it was leaking and we, I couldn't figure out where the leak was until I found a little hole in the gas tank and I use that same JB weld fuel resistant plastic bonder and still to this day it doesn't it doesn't leak so worst case scenario you can always tap that hole or patch that hole it's scary but it's not that big especially when it's plastic these tanks are plastic so it's it's really the only thing that would suck is if it started leaking and I had a full full tank that would suck but you know it's all you can do right anyways if you're looking to tap into your gas tank for a generator or for a Wabasto heater diesel heater or any of those there are definitely different ways of doing it this is what I did it worked for me and oh well okay the reason I wanted to tap in and not go into the auxiliary is because I wanted uh, the, the gravity of the fuel I wanted it low so that way it would push it 
I think I already said this. It would push it pretty much here. The bottom of the tank is about level with the bottom of the generator. So I'm about two inches up. So most of that gas, until it gets down to the where I tap the hole, which is about a quarter tank, that gas is already, already going to be here. And then this prime bulb just sucks it up right here. If I tapped into the, the auxiliary, it would have to go up all the way over. And then, and the only way that I could have ran it was down because you got the, this radiator here. So it had to be down and then back up. With the prime ball, would have it worked? Maybe. But on the side, low on the gas tank was a better way for the fuel to flow. And that's why I did it that way. A lot of people say, wow, why are you going to just... Blah, 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 blah. I, I did it this way. It's fine. It works. It's safe. And I understand it better. So, anyways. Um, I'm sure Wabasso or any of those diesel heater companies have other ways of tapping into the gas tank. Um, you know, there's different ways of doing things. This is what worked for me. I don't regret it at all. Uh, I did this about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks, and it's still good. So I'll revisit this in a year or at the end of the summer. I was very worried about um, how this would affect the fuel tank pressure, because I'm pretty sure these things have a PSI, a pressure in them, and I was concerned about how this would affect that. So far, nothing. I have had no problems with the van. I was very nervous that all of a sudden I get a check engine light on, some sensor went crazy, but nothing yet. Um, if I do have any issues, I will keep you guys updated. Um, yeah, and that's, that's it. It's fairly straightforward. A lot better than that fuel pump and timer and splitters and pressure releases. <laughs> that was an experiment. It worked, but hey, you know, to get here, I had to experiment. And it was awesome. So anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this is educational for anybody that's looking to do anything close to this. Um, like, share, subscribe. Keep it simple and keep it real. If you guys ever see this, V L van life. That's the international van life hand signal van life, man. Yeah.